North in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Talk of a one one millionth scale ball of the earth and we've got a map on here that shows that that top center thing is where we are it's in Sudbury so I'm gonna take my cell phone down to the level of the earth and we're gonna see what the horizon looks like from my cell phone so let's take a look Yeah, yeah. Apparently, you got to think bigger. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, bigger is always better, isn't it? Sure. Well, yeah, not yeah. always the case, but um, sure. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, so, always, what do you think on that video then? Always think bigger. Well, you know, always think bigger. What can I say? You know. Yeah. What do you think on that video then? Well, I thought it was a load of rubbish, to be fair, because mm. um, what is she what what is she actually demonstrating? She's demonstrating she can stand on a on a what appears to be a sphere, concrete sphere, stuck in the like road or whatever, built so, into the pavement. Built into the pavement, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. And she can put a mobile phone on it. Oh, and, right, and yeah. video. Out. And the lens is 1.5 centimetres from the surface. Yeah, basically, that's, yeah. Uh, that's well, kind of all that she's, she's demonstrated. demonstrated in that video. Yeah. And yet she seems to think that she's demonstrated that, uh, that she's demonstrated and proved beyond any reasonable doubt whatsoever that even though people can't detect curvature the curvature is really there yeah. even though it's flat yeah so it looks flat but there's still curvature there. sure it's confusing isn't it yeah hmm hmm uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do and you can still be stupid Yeah, well, we're back again, annoying people with our views and opinions. Because, 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 because. A lot of people dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Ba -bum -bum. Yeah, that's so true. A lot of people do dislike hearing other people's views and opinions, especially today when I was out with Vic and uh, some guy called me an idiot for really? uh, just mm. expressing my views and opinions. Do you think he calls lots of people idiots? Oh, look at that idiot over there. Oh, look at that idiot. Oh, probably, over there. yeah. I, I reckon his uh, best friend is an uh, idiot as well. Uh, Look at that idiot over there. Oh, look at that idiot over there. And yet what he fails to realise is that other people behind his back call him an idiot. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous, yeah. you know. But he, he goes through life blind, blinded. Yeah, not by the light. Not by the light, but it's just basically bl blinded. blinded by bullshit. His eyes are blinkered. Blinkered vision, you know. He's, he's looking see. like this. Narrow vision. All he sees is his planet Earth. Yeah. That's all he sees. Yeah. He doesn't want to see anything beyond yeah. it. Nobody lies to me. No, yeah, everyone tells the truth. Yeah. My teachers don't lie to me. My wife loves me. Absolutely. My kids love me. 
and uh, everyone at le- everyone at work likes me. Likes me, yeah. 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 Everybody thinks I'm really nice. I'm gonna have lots of people at my funeral. Sure, a man's gonna be landing on Mars soon. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. And a man, man can go into outer space. Water's made of hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah, of course. And there's oxygen in the air as a constituent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm only looking at that. F- that I'm tunneling my vision. Yeah. And focusing just on those. Yeah, that is my life. Drenny's you know been to Gaza. That's my life. Drenny's you know been to Gaza. No, I don't, I don't, well, probably they've got not. lots of tunnels there, haven't they? Oh, of course. Yeah, they've got well, lots of tunnels. allegedly, allegedly, allegedly sure. Anyway. But um, yeah, you know. But in, you know, when you hit brass tacks, real level, you know, it's not what he thinks it is. Yeah, because he's sure. he's, sh- he's narrow-minded. He's scared to see what's beyond. And he, he's scared to do that. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's, he's scared, scared to do that. It's a bit like when people just walk past, walk past, or walk past, walk past a homeless person on the street. It's, it's as if he doesn't exist. He's not there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, isn't it a lovely day? Oh, Pete, gonna, isn't it a lovely yeah, day? Going to have some friends around. Oh, look oh, at the yeah. look at the lovely architecture there. Going to have oh. going to have some friends around to my house really uh, at the weekend to stay. Oh, that oh, would be nice. Oh, is that a homeless person oh. who doesn't have a home? Oh, oh let's ignore him. Yeah. Let's just talk about my home. Let's just pretend he's not there. How, how big it is and uh, yeah. lovely. Yeah, sure. You know, this yeah. is what people are really like. Oh, I mean, yeah. people are narrow-minded. Mess- narrow-minded. They're messed up. Stop. Uh, a man only hears what he wants to hear and disregards, disregards the, the rest. rest. Mm. And that is absolutely true. People only want to know what they want to know. Yeah. And if it, if they, they dislike it, or it, the information goes against their their uh, full, fixed false beliefs, yeah, their fixed false beliefs, their agenda, or their, their or whatever, they won't want to know. They'll dismiss yeah. it. Yeah, just, they'll just dismiss it out of hand. And um, it could be very credible information, but mm. no, not interested. Yeah, I'm not interested. You know, no, that's rubbish. Those absolutely, of course, yeah. But uh, you know, this is this is the this is. Uh, the state of human Mil- beings. beings yeah. Human beings are fucked up. Top, yeah. They're a fucked up species, species. And at the end of the day, if anyone likes would like to prove me wrong, then I think you've got a lot of work to do. Mm, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, after after the day that I've had talking to one particular person who was adamant that this Earth is a is a planet, you know. Mm, yeah. And I mean, well, show me then it's a planet. Show me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it, you know, what's he going to do? You know, tell you to go over to W. H. Smith and buy a magazine you know, on the solar system. Yeah, you know, or just yeah. The the good the good one was that he asked me, he asked me and Vic, how do you explain sunsets? And you think, well, okay. As far as I'm aware, is my opinion is that the sun just moves further away. I mean, no, it can't be that because it would get smaller in size. But what makes you say that? And I'm thinking, but how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know that? Just because a car gets smaller and smaller as it moves course. away, travels away from you as an observer, it doesn't mean to say that the sun does exactly the same thing. Absolutely. And an aircraft, an aircraft gets smaller and smaller as it goes, flies overhead and then moves, flies away from you. Yeah. You get smaller and smaller. We're aware of these things. Yeah. But the thing is, is that the sun is a celestial object. And it's not so, man-made. It's not a man-made object. It's not an earthly um, object. Entity. It, it, it's something completely different. Yeah, it's beyond. So you can't apply your experiences with cars and aircraft and all of this other Mountains. stuff. Mountains. Mountains and all this other stuff to celestial objects. objects yeah. Because that's just ridiculous for you to yeah. be doing so. Because it's a completely different realm up there. Absolutely, of course. And you've got to, if you, if you disagree with that, then you've got to demonstrate that the that the sun and other celestial objects are um, made of earthly materials. Mm, yeah. And how are you going to do that? Yeah. Right. Know. You know, I mean, you're, you're not yeah. going to do it. Come on. Mm. It's just bullshit, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like saying that the moon is 239,000 miles away. Well, how do you know that? It's because you, oh, because you've been told by other people. Oh, oh, right. Somebody else has got a PhD, or they've got a doctorate, or they've even got a professorship, whatever, and yet they they're telling you that the the moon is two hundred and thirty nine thousand miles away. Mm. But how do they know that it's true? Yeah. When they've never been to the moon. Yeah. They've never been anywhere. Oh, but some people say, but because we can bounce a laser off the surface of the moon. But then one could ask oneself, but how do you know that laser is being bounced off the moon? 
Well, how do you know? It could be, be, it could be bouncing off something else that's much nearer. But well, where would you go to test um, the laser bouncing off a, an object that is 239,000 miles, miles away? away. Yeah. Where would you go? Where would you go to do that? Just to test that your laser works. Yeah, that can even reach 239,000 yeah. miles. How, 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 where are you going to go? You know, it's that it's utter, it's utter drivel. Yeah. The amount of rubbish that people uh, accept as yeah. being true. You know, the evidence. Yeah. We don't do evidence on and our most, channel, do yeah, we? We yeah, do, no. do not do evidence on our and channel. And most level, most lasers have a dispersion. The, the further it travels, the sure, more yeah, the dispersion. It, yeah. it widens out. It splays out, doesn't it? So how does, if no one's tested it, if no one's got a laser and, and fired it 239,000 miles, how can anyone determine the actual dispersion well, that, it, that, it, that it's been reflected back and yeah. detected you know I mean come on I mean it's just um, it's just crazy it's crazy, just crazy talk crazy, yeah. crazy talk I, was, I remember seeing a, I remember seeing a, a video a long time ago and they had somebody in a, in a kind of like a lab setting and they had a screen and on the screen was a, the, a, a view of the moon as it were and they shot apparently they shot a laser towards it and you saw a flash on the screen oh right do you right. remember seeing that one? yeah I think so and yeah. you think to yourself well okay that's, that sounds good but you know did, is that the actual laser that's been fired on the, on the surface is yeah. that the actual moon yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. how do you know you know I, I don't, don't know. know you see we are, we are not um, what was it we are not um, science denialists we are very sceptical of science yeah because science doesn't do truth or proof yeah science works on the basis of having evidence and building up an idea or an understanding of the natural world on evidence mm. now evidence supports ideas so if you've got an idea that the earth is a planet you can find lots of evidence to support yeah. that view you can have ships going allegedly over the horizon that's yeah. one you can have an eclipse oh solar right, yeah eclipse, solar eclipse where yeah. you see the allegedly the moon okay moving in front of the sun mm. okay to block that so you, that would support your heliocentric idea yeah that's evidence okay it's not proof no but it's evidence and this is the trouble with science science only do deals with evidence mm. and people like peter and myself we'd like to see proof we, we, we are we are um you know we we've uh what's the word we have more stringent we have um, higher thresholds of of certainty of certainty we'd like to be we'd like to have knowledge about the world in which we live we don't mm. want to have uh well it could be this but it could be that we don't want to be living like that we want to have knowledge well we we don't want to be living uh, in a belief system in a belief system based on other people's ideas absolutely on course, what they yeah. think absolutely, the earth is course, or yeah. what they think the moon is or what they think they, the sun is or, or, how, or how they think tides work yeah basically yeah, so yeah. we don't want to accept all that because there's no proof it's just an yeah. idea anyone could come up with an idea of course yeah you know. anyway come on but um, um, obviously uh, that, that's, that's it isn't it so what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for tonight then Peter yeah well for everyone's displeasure We've got what's for the bin this week. Absolutely, yeah, because um, obviously a lot of people are filled with rubbish. Yeah, or trash, rubbish. or trash or garbage. Absolutely, yeah. Even the guy, I, I was talking to this guy today with Vic out in the street, and I was saying to him, but there's so much bullshit out in life. A lot of people lie, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Mm. And he said to me, well, there you go, you're lying. And I'm thinking, but you've, how do you know that? Yeah, I know, yeah. How do you, you know, know that, that I'm lying? lying yeah. I'm only giving out my... Um, my own uh, opinion opinion that's all i mm. do yeah. i don't i don't say that the earth is flat and it's a fact do you know, i don't do that because it's just my opinion that we're living on this horizontal plane mm. and the earth is not a planet that's just my opinion so all i do is give out my opinion but the guy still wants his proof will prove to me the earth's flat and i think what yeah. i don't need to prove anything to you yeah i know yeah you know and yet the worst thing is, is that, you know, I asked him for proof to back up his science, and he says that um, there's loads of proof. <laughs> right, <laughs> <So> okay. <why? laughs> Do you know what I mean? He, he, and I was saying to him, he goes round, and we're going round and round in circles, round yeah. and round. You know, when are these people actually going to click on 
there's something seriously wrong with their science. Yeah. Because so many people are um, picking holes in it. So many people, millions of people, people. are picking holes in science. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah. Every day. Every day. And mm. so there's got to be something wrong with the science. And as far as I'm concerned, science's biggest mistake is de being dependent on evidence. Mm. It should be dependent on proof. But it can't prove, this is a problem, it can't prove things in relation to the natural world. Can't do it, can't do it. Can't prove there's oxygen as a constituent of the air. Can't prove that water's made of hydrogen and oxygen. It can't, science can't prove that the Earth is indeed a planet. Can't prove that there's two magnetic poles. Absolutely, of course, and so much more. Can't prove that um, light is electromagnetic. Yeah, can't prove can't it. Can't prove it. Because it's all ideology. It's yeah. all an ideology. That's mm. all science can yeah. ever produce and formulate. Yeah, anyway. But anyway, on. so what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for tonight? Well, for Peter? what's in the bin this week, we're going to we're going to put uh, Nathan Oakley's idea in the bin. In the bin. This is all about uh, why ships go are seen to why go the bottom of ships are oh, seen to uh, be, disappear. Are seen to be cut off. Yeah. When uh, when they're on the horizon, yeah. So we're going to put Nathan Oakley's idea in the bin to account for that in the, the bin. In the bin, we're going to have a look at a plasmoid thunderstorm generator and put some of it in the bin. bin. Yeah, we're going to put some of it in the in bin. the bin. Absolutely, of course. Uh, we're going to put. Uh, we're going to revisit the K K KC KC and the uh, Sunshine Band. You're going to put her video that we showcased at the beginning with the little bit of concrete that was curved. Yeah, we're going to put her video standing on the curved concrete. Or we're going to put the contents of her video in the in bin. the bin. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, and that's it. And that's it, of course. Yeah, and we might we might have a look at we're angular have a, resolution. Yeah, we're going to well. have a look at angular resolution, and we've got some videos to show people about sunsets over sunrises over the horizon over the. Horizon, the horizon, horizon, yeah, yeah, the horizon, yeah, sun, sunset, sunrises over the horizon. Um, so that will tie in with um, uh, Nathan Oakley's one, wouldn't it? Of yeah, course. basically, yeah. So, yeah, let's go. On. so let's go. What should we do first, then, Peter? Well, we might as well have a, the driving seat. have a look at this plasmoid thunderstorm generator. Right, okay, now we did, we got Josh Green gave us a link to a video. I'm yeah. just trying to think, it was this video here, uh, Randall Colson finally reveals proof of ancient lightning bolt technology. Mm. Well, now this has got to be some kind of, I don't know, well, really, when you think about it, it's got to be some kind of I joke, like really, isn't it? Yeah, I like how, I like how they, they say Randall Carlson is a geometrician, Ge geomythologist, geological, Ge geological explorer, explorer, and renegade scholar. Randall investigates and documents the catastrophic history of the world and the evidence, there you go, evidence, not for proof, ad for advanced knowledge in earlier cultures, in earlier cultures yeah. of ancient lightning bolt, bolt technology. technology. Wow. Now, when you, when you think about it, I mean, it's, it sounds good. It sounds good. But at the end of the day, you know, you read the title and you think to yourself, it's, it can't be real, can it? No. How d is it possible that the ancients had the technology to create, create a, lightning li bolt. a lightning bolt? And <laughs> also, why would they want to create? Or, or maybe lightning they bolts. created a little spark, a little spark. Mm, possibly. But then they, they, the, the title of the video should be Randall Carlson finally reveals proof of ancient yeah. spark, electric spark technology. Possibly, yeah. You know, yeah. but he, he's got proof here. Yeah. And yet he's only looking at evidence and the evidence for advanced knowledge in oh, earlier right, cultures. Yeah. Evidence. So clear, for, straight away there's a, an, an anomaly mm. or there's conflict yeah. between the title of the video and the content of the description. Well, it's, it's another example that highlights how science, people in science, confuse themselves between evidence and proof. Sure, and they use them interchangeably as if they're both the same word or have both the same meaning. So but they don't. Yeah, did, so you, did you see that other video? What other video? On the, that was on the sidebar. Side, side yeah. panel. New evidence for ancient computers in Egypt. Oh, wow, you know. Wow. I mean, I know they, I know it's they just had. It's unbelievable, but, isn't it? But, but they, they had abacuses. You know, new evidence for ancient robots. New, new evidence. In Sumeria. 
you know, you know, they can find evidence for for anything. I can put, um, I can put, uh, like, a, I can put a deck of cards in my pocket, for example, and I can tell everyone I've got, um, I've got a thousand pounds in in my pocket, thousand yeah, well, pounds yeah. in my pocket, yeah. and you know, that's evidence. The the deck of cards yeah. in my pocket, the bulge that you can see in my pocket, is evidence that I have a thousand quid notes in my pocket yeah you know that's it's just evidence yeah. see the thing is is that some people will accept that and they'll accept what i'm saying yeah but people like me and peter will think well okay you might have you might not let's see well take it out of your pocket and let's take, see absolutely take yeah. it out of your pocket and let's see so you know if you think the earth's a spinning ball and it's you know and it's it's curved you know it's a planet then let's see. Let's see that there's proof of this. Mm. You know, let's see. There's proof of motion. Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't. I can't see any motion mm. anyway. at all. Anyway, so Randall Coulson. Coulson. I don't know where to start with this because he talks. We, I don't really want to go into his um, ancient. Well, we could actually play some of his ancient bolt. The plasmoid unification. I don't want to do that. I'm not sure. What about the var, var the Vardra? Go on, Implosive then. turbine and the ancient thunderbolt, thunderbolt tool. tool. Go on. Then. Should we should we listen to some of this? Yeah, because it's well. The thing is, is that this is like two hours sixteen minutes long. The hill vortex yeah, tube. Are we ready? Right. Let's go have on. a little listen to this. Oh. It's called the Vajra Implosive Turbine. The Vajra Implosive Turbine. The Vajra is... What the hell is from that? The, <laughs> I was afraid you were going to ask me. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Oh. Let's talk about sex. Fellas, do you remember the days when you were always ready to go? It's a server. Yeah. Google beer not done on the Blue Pack Impressions. Stupid e and all for two for sure. Indra is yeah. one of the Hindu gods. Maybe one Steve would gods. look Indra up for us and report back to us. Yes. Indra. Indra. I N D R A. Okay. The king of divas. The king of divas. So we can look so at it. So Indra wielded the Vajra. That was the source of his power. When was Indra around? Well, I mean, he's mythical, so I. Do we have any ideas based on texts or? When... Well, this is our Vedic texts. Which... Oh, got it. Okay. Indra is the king of the divas, godlike deities, and Svarga. Heaven yeah. in Hinduism. He's associated with the sky, lightning, weather, thunder, storms, rains, See? river flows, and war. Indra's powers are similar to other Indo European deities, such as Jupiter, Perun. I can't, I can't go on any further because yeah, it's just, they're just talking rubbish. They're just talking rubbish. rubbish. They're just talking uh, the <sighs> rubbish, conjectural bullshit. Mm. You know, all of these but Hindu anyway. gods, you know, I mean, it's just nobody knows what a god is. Yeah. Anyway, you know, come on. Nobody can define it. But anyway. Um, but um, we 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 watched this and we thought you know it's just. Well, I haven't watched it. Well, I've watched a, I've watched a bit of it, but for the first uh, for the first um, I think the first yeah ninety minutes all he does is just talk about rubbish, mm, just talk yeah. rubbish, just yeah. packs out the video really. Um, but so it was it was like but we we moved on from this video. Did you and, mention Josh Green? Gave yeah, it? I mentioned Josh Green gave us a link to this. And I can't really, we can't really say much about this apart from, in our opinion, it's probably just a load of rubbish. rubbish yeah, probably just a load of rubbish. Probably just a load of rubbish. Okay. But so that's off uh, just from what we've seen of it and yeah. even read of it. But so we ended up going on. I ended up going on this video. Oh, right. thunderstorm generator. Because I wonder what the, what is this thunderstorm? What, no, what you know? What's it all about? This thunderstorm. And uh, let's have a little listen to this bloke here. He's from Australia, and he's got this. Uh, He's got this set up, so let's just play it from here. Okay, listening. Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, and I'm down here in Melbourne today to check out the prototype of the Thunderbolt generator. And we're pretty excited. There's a few other things in the workshop, so we're gonna go right around, give this thing a run, and have a look at the other larger one, which isn't functioning at the moment, and the jet turbine down here. And, everything we've got so pretty exciting stuff we don't have really any tools to analyze anything so you're going to be relying on my nose um hopefully everything's going to go well let's see um 
the retrofit just piece by piece. Obviously, this one looks a little different to the one that was demoed at Tesla Tech, but it's all the same design here. So this is the ionization chamber, um, and I doubt you can see inside it, but there is just a large UV globe in there, and that's, you can see this is incredibly, incredibly simple. It's just a PVC container here, um, and then the outlet coming down here. So we can see our ionized air goes through there. Um, we've got, this is just like a little uh, filling valve, like to put the, the water in or whatever you're putting in the bubbler. Uh, and then you can see this pipe continues down here, goes into the bottom of the bubbler. And then we've got the, this air stone in here that's gonna micronize those bubbles um, and send them up through here. So this is all happening because of, you know, the vacuum from the engine's pistons as we've already just, you know, explained in the last video, so I won't go through that too much, but then our air gets pulled up through the water and the stainless steel kind of, uh, uh, what's it called? Steel wool catalyst here, up through this mesh, gets vacuumed right up through here. And then this is where we've got that valve just to start the engine up and then turn the, the unit in on afterwards. Uh, and then it's going all the way back around and down into the bottom of the thunderstorm generator here. So we can see this is just coming right in the bottom. And we've seen in the new designs that Malcolm is adding another sphere there as like a swirl guide. Uh, but at the moment, that's just, um, just coming straight in there by the looks of it. And then we've got, so this is two pipes. We've got an outer pipe uh, and then, and ooh, watch out puppy. <laughs> and, then an, and then we've got an inner pipe inside it um, and so the the cold stream uh, of the plasma coming through from the uh, the generator is just coming up through that center pipe there right up into through the center of this sphere and then so this sphere that's two spheres we've got another one inside it and I'll ask the guys of these um, the, uh, the diameter of these spheres in a moment but the cold air is coming up inside it the hot air is coming out of the exhaust here. Um, this is where the retrofit goes. And then it's going in this outside sphere using the inner one as a swirl guide uh, and counterclockwise spiraling down. So the cold and hot streams don't actually touch as far as I'm aware. They're, they're the hot streams just going around the outside, the cold stream on the inside, which is why we're getting that violent um, temperature differential. And, and that's how the reaction's happening. So then it's just going straight into the engine. Uh, what's happening uh, down here, like we've... Uh, okay, so you get just the yeah. wrong comp basic components of the machine. Uh, so they've got it wired up to a generator. They've got a bubbler. They've got a, a UV light to allegedly ionize the air, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Now, let's see them put it in operation. Uh, there's a guy it should be around here with us with 357 a, was it 350 probably was no that's that's there I'm looking for his stick yeah it was, it was about 357 was it? it yeah I'm sure it was oh there yeah, yeah, no, no, sorry, 656 yeah. here we are now he's got it working so he's just using a spot thermometer to to just to measure or ascertain the temperature of his uh, little uh, dome sphere. sphere thing. Okay, so let's listen to this.
So you, you basically oh, get the gist if everyone heard that. And right, that was, okay. The guy uh, smelt the exhaust and uh, he was saying that it was a lot cleaner, it's breathable. Um, so all they're doing here is that they're creating some kind of um, process. process in order to uh, reduce the harmful emissions from a petrol diesel engine. Um, that's all they're doing, you know, and yet yeah. they call it a thunderstorm plasmoid generator. Yeah, because I really can't, I can't get my head around that at all. Well, if you if you uh, go on those that sphere that's uh, linked, connected to the exhaust of the engine, the, uh, the there. sphere oh, there is there is there that sphere that there. sphere there. Now inside that is another sphere, and this is why they call it a thunderstorm generator because you, you have you have circulation two. Circulations of air going in opposite yeah, one's directions. One's hot and one's cold. One's hot and one's cold. And this is why they're saying that you have it's a thunderstorm generator. Yeah, but the thing is, is that you've got a metal pipe that separates the two streams. Well, there is that as well. So it's not really a thunderstorm generator because you don't have metal metal uh, separators sure. up in the atmosphere, do you? Yeah, I mean, we so did, uh, it's it's not actually generating a thunderstorm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we've got. Um, We've got, um, I think this guy Randall Carlson, he actually talks about the same kind of thing. And is it there? Yeah, it's here, yeah. This is it, yeah. He actually talks about the same kind of thing. Should we just play this? Well, right. Uh, let's have a little listen to this. That's right. And is there just one uh, toroid? Is that what it's called? Toroid? The, the donut shape? Taurus. Taurus. Yeah, yeah. So is there only one of those inside that bubbler? Oh, no, there's billions there's of them. Billions, billions of them. Billions of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, billions of them. Now, this is a video. I don't know. If, can we play a video? Yeah, we can play a video. Okay, let's see. Let's see if Just I turn can. Turn the get... volume down on your computer. Turn the volume down on my computer yeah. is what uh, you said. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to. Just play it. So you're fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So this is Gary Ling. He's in London, and he's been overseeing the, the, uh, the build-out uh, of the... Uh, of the the big industrial. Now this is this is a couple of years ago where they were still testing like backyard scale of things. So this is he's got this in his backyard. They've built the thing. They've hooked it up to a Honda generator, and I'm going to fast forward through some of it. But um, he gives a great explanation of what's going on. Let's see if I can. Okay, so he's pointing the gas analyzer here. Okay. And. They're going to hook up. They're going to take the probe from the gan the analyzer, and they're going to put it. The exhaust pipe is is down here, and they're going to feed it into the exhaust pipe. Okay. Um, I imagine. I think this is the guy who has built built it according to Malcolm's specifications. Yeah. So he's now going to uncover. So you see the generator there, and okay. So I'm going to pause it right here for a second. Okay, so this is the, the ionizer. So they feed air into the top. It's subjected to UV light of a, a frequency of about 100 microns. And then that comes down here in this pipe, and then it's mixed with water, and that comes in, and here's the bubblers where the cavitation bubbles are created. And when those billions of cavitation bubbles collapse, they emit a light, they emit frequency of UV light, ultraviolet light, in the same at the same frequency as the pre-ionizer chamber. And it was this pre-ionizer chamber that... It I've got to say that yeah, the reason why they say that they emit UV light is because you can't, can't see, see any it, light yeah, at, all at all being yeah. produced. Yeah, basically. And yeah. Because <laughs> if you go back on the other video... It is funny the way these on, people if you go, you know, yeah, interpret. If, if you go back on the other video... Where he's showing the bubbler here in this video. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I think. Oh, wait. Talk there. Oh, that, 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 there. that thing there. there. Where's the light? Where do you see any oh, light there. When, coming when from this? Um, when it's working. When it's working. Let's have a little look. It's, it's working. I think it was working here. Yeah, you can see the. Yeah. yeah. It's Where's working. the light? There? Where's the light? There's no light there. There's none whatsoever. But they're saying it's UV light to make people think that it is producing light but you can't see it because it's beyond the visible spectrum Spectrum. absolutely of course yeah you know i mean it's rubbish you you can't get you can't make this shit up yeah you can't make this shit up you know how these how these things work is very straightforward but i I feel that these people 
are making it very overly complicated yeah. so that it makes them look oh well we're we're very clever and we're, yeah, we're, no, we're yeah, you yeah. know we're, we deserve some kind of you know whatever but let's let, let's carry on listening is the the key to being able to generate the plasmas at lower energies than it would normally take to cause that disassociation between electrons and neutrons okay i don't fully understand exactly how it works again get me back on six months and I should be able to be a little bit more, you know, more uh, So this U, it's, it's UV. That's, that's the, where the energy is coming from, the UV light. The UV light, I wouldn't say that's where the energy is coming from. Okay. But the UV does, is emitted when those cavitation bubbles collapse. Okay. Well, how does he know that? I mean, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. you know. What does he use to test that there's UV light? Oh, what what did uh, the the guy from the guy from London uh, do to test that? All he's done is shove something up the exhaust, yeah. Yeah. a gas meter. Yeah. When I look at this this technology, you know, all I'm looking at is just the process to clean the exhaust from a hydrocarbon from an engine that's from an powered engine. F using a hydrocarbon Use, fuel. Yeah, using. Uh, it's all petrol, it is. petrol, diesel, whatever. It's all it is. It's all it is, and yet why can't they just keep it um, simple? Keep it the what, basic. Tell it, say it as it say is. Say it as it, it is, is but yeah. now they've got to complicate matters so much. Yeah. Um, I think we should just finish off on this one. Go on then. Um, because he, he, even this guy, Randall Carlson, doesn't know exactly how this thing works. Yeah. You know, even he's admitted. Well, we that, need yeah. to just get back onto the spheres. But one thing I would like to do, and that's just mention the bit about where he talks about the oxygen. Oh, right, well, yeah. Oh, so, because well. I think that's quite interesting. So let's just, I'll skip forward this because they actually, um, he plays the video and he's looking at the um, the meters on the, the gas meter. Okay, he's obviously going through what the machine oh, the, does. The, Carbon monoxide. Carbon meters. monoxide and the. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So let, I think we can probably yeah, just play it there. Just play it from here. Okay. Have a little listen to this. In the emissions that are coming out. So there he's hooking it up. They're running the gas analyzer. And let's see here. Um, we don't have the volume, so I'm not sure exactly what part. That This is Gary Ling here. Mm -hmm. He's. This is actually his backyard where they've built this thing, and he's he's friends with Malcolm and has known him for years. Um, so uh, I probably skipped over, but they've got so that the exhaust coming out of that thing is twenty percent oxygen. Could, that could be nineteen, could be twenty. The highest I've seen is twenty point nine percent. So, so is that is that the is that the main reason people would want to use this is to lower carbon emissions and to decrease like pollution and things like that or are there any other well that would be benefits of using this technology? one of the main reasons well, yeah, you know, they're saying that it's 20.9 percent oxygen coming out of that so you have to ask yourself well what's the other 70 79 percent 78.1 percent yeah. coming out of it because there's no nitrogen and they have to say that it's no that no but they they no because they've got the the carburetor will take air in won't it oh, I'm, not, right. I'm unsure i'm unsure whether yeah they must be taking air in must no be. the air is is fed in through the system and then goes into the engine. I didn't think yeah. I didn't get that impression. All I saw was the because this is what they they didn't show that on the uh, on the they didn't show on the the generator. They didn't show what air was going in. Yeah, if you look, if you go back onto the diagram with the sphere, well, where's the diagram the, with the sphere? The video that shows you the the Australian bloke, the Australian bloke, yeah, yeah, yeah. where he shows you the sphere. Okay, let's go on to the sphere. Just want to see the sphere. Maybe we have. There was a pipe that went up. There, there. That that pipe up goes to the top. That pipe yeah. there it goes in to the intake. Oh, it goes into the intake. Oh, right. Okay, I've got you now. Right. Okay. So all they're doing is mixing the 
the in, cleaning the intake air, okay, cleaning the intake air, and mixing the in, the the exhaust with the intake air. Hmm. That's all what they're doing. Well, so we could argue they're actually heating it up. They're heating up the, the intake air. air. Yeah, yeah, they're heating up the the intake air. So you know, what's what's with the plasmoid generator? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't know I'm just, a lot just of lost people, people around. Yeah, this you is know. where their science and their and their. Uh, oh, okay, it's just getting lost. It's all getting lost. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're, they're you know, and they're. they're you see, the thing is, you'll also get a, a, maybe also a little bit of hydrogen produced in your because they're using uh, wire wool. Aren't they using wire wool for their in their bubbler? Yeah, and that's that's going to break down the wire. That, that will eventually break, break down, down, so it will release a small Hi amount of hydrogen. hydrogen. Yeah, you know, I mean, and also you've got to remember is that, that when they say that it's it's uh, they they are identifying uh, twenty point nine percent oxygen, they've actually used an oxygen sensor which is calibrated to detect is factory set to detect twenty point nine percent oxygen in the air. Anyway. Anyway, so yeah, that let's assume that they have used an oxygen sensor. But it doesn't mean to say that there is 29, 20.9 percent oxygen in the air. Absolutely, it's just yes. it, it, the device is telling them that there is, yeah. even though there is. But I suppose it's just what, it, air. what it does is that it shows that the air that is exhausted is, is clean. Is, is clean. Yeah, that's exhausted. The air that is exhausted is clean. clean. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, yeah. I suppose that's the only thing you can actually. Say if you're using your oxygen sensor, sensor, yeah, and you shove it up the, the exhaust, you know. But uh, you know, I mean, wh whether it actually does clean um, and reduce and emissions, thing is, you know, it may well do. You know, it's it's probably right. But I think it's the way they put in this foot technology yeah, forward. Yeah. I think it's way it's way people are thinking too much pie in the sky, and yeah. they could just come down to brass tacks level and just say, yeah, it's just a way of cleaning. Um, the exhaust gases. Exhaust gases. That's from an all engine. it is. From an engine, yeah. From that's, an that's what we've developed. Yeah. Okay, well, that sounds quite good, you know. But get rid of the... Please get rid of the plasmoid... B bullshit. Plasmoid the, thunderstorm. Pla yeah, bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, all that's bollocks, really, you know. They, they yeah, could yeah. come up with some kind, you know. It's an, an air purifier. It's an air purifier. Exhaust actually. purifier. Yeah, the thing is, is that cars have got catalytic converters on. Because oh, right, you might find if you put your oxygen sensor at, at a catalytic converter, even that will read twenty point nine. Oh, that's an idea. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. an idea. Even that would. And read another thing is when, you, when the guy put his his nose to the to the exhaust pipe. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, I can breathe. <laughs> oh, I can just smell a slight taint of burning. Burn, burning, yeah. burning. But he should be doing that in a confined space, really, not when he's open to the air. Oh no, he's he's only doing a rough he's only doing a rough test though, isn't he really? But uh, you know, I mean, you know, there you go. I just wish people would. Uh, so whether t the technology is all right or, or not all right, we're not interested. But the, it's just the manner in which people are putting forward and presenting their, their bullshit science. Their, well, their their technology. Oh well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Th this anyway, is the on. point that we'd like to criticise. On this, uh, really, you know. Yeah. All right, so, so thanks, so that's Josh that. Green, for that. Thanks ever so much. Yeah, for that. And for that. Uh, but ancient lightning bolt technology, mm -hmm. I doubt it very much. Absolutely, of course. Uh, sure, of course. Well, everyone loves the story, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. love the story. Yeah. Love the story. Anyway, how well, long have you got? <laughs> absolutely, of course. Yeah. Uh, what should we do next then, well, Peter? Let's, let's go and on. Let's have a look at Casey and her sunshine Casey. band. Oh, here we go. Now, Casey thinks that flat earthers tell lies, apparently. Yeah. And uh, you know, so let's go to the beginning of the video. Uh, we'll we'll mute the sound. Uh, so the lies flat earthers tell. The horizon, horizon should, should curve, curve on, on a ball. ball. Yeah. Well, it should be. Really, a lot shouldn't it? Flat earthers contend if the Earth were a globe. We should never see a flat horizon. Mm, yep. I have a terrible understanding of the scale of the world we really? live in. Mm, really? Because obviously mm. we've all heard it before. A lot of people think, but the Earth is massive. It's, it's huge. So if you're looking at a little chunk of it, or it's going to appear to be flat, isn't it? Yeah. So here she's standing. She's standing on this man-made concrete, concrete kind of um, parts dome, there. small dome that is represent. Represents 
a small portion of the whole Earth. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Uh, imaginary Earth. They're imaginary Earth. They're imaginary planet. Yeah. They're imaginary planet. So this is where she is, you know. Wow. And there's the uh, man-made design wow. construction. Okay, it's built by human beings. One centimetre on here represents one million centimetres in real life. Which is ten kilometres. So one centimetre represents ten kilometres. Ten kilometres, yeah. So, yeah, yeah bear that um, in mind. She's using her technology, obviously using her mobile phone to record the video. Wow. But she's also she's going clever. to use her mobile phone uh, to look at the so-called horizon that can be seen through the lens of her mobile phone. Oh, here we go. The things I, she does for Flat Earth. Oh, look look at that flat horizon. Flat mm. horizon, okay. Mm. So, oh, look, wait there. Wait, oh, look at that. Can you see the, the straight line there? Well, I can see the straight line she's put on there. Yeah, sure, yeah. But to me... That looks like snake skin, doesn't it? I mean, oh, right, yeah, snake it does, skin, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so apparently she, she kind of like calculates that she's 1.5 centimetres above the the level of the ground surface, surface. which may, which would imply that she's 15 kilometers above uh, well above ground altitude, level in altitude in altitude 15 kilometers mm. and she's saying there you go there's the horizon and it's flat all right you know so mm. um, that that and to her that she's now proved yeah she's now proved well the reason proved. why no to her oh she's, sorry, yeah. she's proved she's more than satisfied that the reason why you, the horizon is level, okay, when you look out the horizon, it's level f on the sh sea, okay, is simply because the Earth's really big. And she's yeah. proved that by going on, standing on this little, this little dome. Dome, dome wow, bit is she there. clever? Wow. You know, I think she this should little get, domey bit here. Yeah, I, I think she should get a PhD for that. Well, yeah, I think it's so amazing. Too. It's absolutely amazing what she's done. I know, yeah. And yet the thing is, is that is how she on earth? Super, is, she, is she superhuman? I, I don't know. But the thing is, is that um, how, how on earth, to me, I think this is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And it's pure insanity for somebody to be standing on this man-made dome mm. and, yeah. set, and put a phone on there and say, there you go, that represents real life. Yeah. Because this is not you don't you don't walk around in the natural world and see these kind of these domes. No, you don't do that. No. You don't have even have a mobile phone. Uh, you yeah, know? no, no. Yeah. And another thing that I'd like to mention as well is if you get the image up of her with her phone on the on the surface. Yeah. Uh, now here she's actually saying it, she pans out. So if you just play it. Oh right. Oh sorry. Yeah, no. just leave it like that. Oh no. Now she's saying that it's one centimetre to is equal to ten kilometres. Yeah. So she's fifteen kilometres above in altitude. So how wide do you think that um horizon would be from her from her view viewing viewing range? angle? Yeah. I'd say that's at least four hundred uh, forty centimetres, wouldn't you? Yeah. 40 centimetres, would you agree with that? Or, you know, approximately, let's not, uh, let's yeah. not be too... Let's not beat around the bush here, you know, let's be generous as well. So one centimetre is 10 kilometres, 40 centimetres, 400 kilometres. Well, yeah. And she's saying that it's a flat horizon. Flat horizon, yeah, yeah look at that flat horizon. Yeah, so just bear that in mind. Yeah, look, she's even going to put the... Uh, admittedly, she closes in, zooms in, but then she pans zooms out. In, yeah. And she she said, look at that flat horizon. Well, look, yeah. she even puts the line on there. Look, watch, look, she's put yeah. the line on there. There is the line. The line, yeah. the straight line. Yeah. She's telling everyone that even on a ball, okay, you can look at the horizon, a small part of that ball, and it will be flat. Yeah. Okay, flat. 400 kilometres. Approximately. Kilometers. Approximately. Yeah. From one end to the other. Yeah, yeah. 400 kilometres. Mm. Now, that's a long way, isn't it? Now, let's have a little butchers. So why is it... Why is it that when you uh, look out at... Uh, a why ship. is it when you look at a boat that's moving away from you... and Out going, to sea. Out to sea. Why is it the bottom of it is cut off? Oh, right. Oh, when... But 
Yeah, because she, she's saying it should she's be flat. She's saying it's flat. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. That's the point. Doesn't mm. make sense, does it? That, and that's, go, only, that. that's only about four miles out, isn't it? It's about four miles out, and roughly. Yet, and yet her uh, horizon was about 400 kilometres. Yeah, because we've always got to remember the visible horizon is about three, three miles, miles from yeah. the shoreline. Yeah. So, you know, this, this boat is, uh, you know... Four miles. Well, it's probably a bit more miles, than that. Five four, miles. Five miles, you yeah. know. But we, sh we, so we should be able to see the bottom of it. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. So that uh, there's a pieces of information there. That do not... Um, that don't make sense. They don't jive. Absolutely, of course. So it makes you realise that... Uh, what's her name? Wherever she is. You know, th this, this girl, Casey... And the sunshine band, and as well without the sunshine, sunshine band, band. Oh, it's right, raining. Yeah. Oh right. Um, she she's really, in in my opinion, she's only doing this video just to satisfy herself that her belief, her fixed false belief, is true. Yeah, that's all she's doing. Yeah. She's convincing herself. So, she wants, yeah. She's reinfor It's positive reinforcement. Mm. If you want to look at it like that, she's reinforcing her own ideas about the earth that she's standing on, living yeah. on, because she doesn't want to accept or admit that people have lied to her yeah oh you know, well yeah teachers and, yeah teachers educationists teachers, yeah professors professors people on the tv yeah friends yeah. family yeah the, li the list goes on yeah. yeah she doesn't want to accept that she's all alone in life yeah she's on her own yeah and also, also, she wants to live in this dream world with oh, well, yeah. I've got loads of friends and everyone likes me. Oh yeah. She's now yeah, reminded she's like this, yeah. yeah. Everybody likes me. Yeah. You know, I'm a star pupil at school. Yeah. I've got yeah. really good grades at school. Yeah. It's because I'm brain it's because I'm intelligent. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the earth's a ball. It's a spinning yeah. ball. ball. It's yeah. a planet. Yeah. You know, oh, this, yeah. this is what it is. No no one commits any crime. Yeah, of course. Only flat earthers are filled with lies. Yeah. I don't lie. I'm yeah. honest and I'm righteous. Nobody lies. My father hasn't lied to yeah, me. Yeah, my parents yeah, haven't lied, lied to me. To me. I don't, the teachers haven't lied, lied to me. me. I know they get paid to do a job and they don't want to lose their pensions, but they wouldn't lie to, to me, me. No. would they? Yeah, of course. You know, but beyond the beyond the hands, beyond the tunnelled vision, that's real life. Yeah, she's shit scared of it. Yeah. as far as I'm concerned and also I would actually say that there there is a slight I'd say that there is a slight curve <clears throat> yeah that, the thing is is that. that what Casey didn't do is that she didn't or she failed to actually put the image in a like a like a, a um, this kind of program like mm. GIMP yeah. and actually see if the horizon was actually straight and actually yeah. zoom in and look you know, because when we look at the image, this is the image, and we'll just go, we'll just zoom in a little bit more. Okay, just pan in. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd say there is a slight curve. To yeah, it. so you can curve. see the, um, now the red, the red is a layer that is definitely straight. The layer mm, is yeah. definitely straight. So, the um, and that's sitting on top of the image taken from the, yeah that case her, is vi her video the dome but you can see that you know when we actually do look at the edge of the curve i know it's a little bit blurry but when we get to this side it starts you can see it's touching mm. the red um, area on the right side of the picture but on the left there's a clear gap yeah so we, we it can't be straight, straight can it yeah it can't be straight it can't be straight it is you know, curved. You know, well, it is curved because and you've only got to look back. I know, yeah. Think, oh, and curved. to be fair, when you do actually think about it, you think she'd use a better surface than this surface here. Yeah, I know. Because yeah. you think she'd use a, a smooth surface. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah, that would be a lot better. To that would use. have been a lot better and, to have done. And, and like I've said before, that line that she's put there would represent about four hundred kilometres wide. Sure. And as far as I'm concerned, when you look out at... Um, well, you see uh, that boat, allegedly. A lot of globies yeah. say that ships go over, over the horizon. horizon. Yeah, even at four miles, four or five miles. four or five miles, there's, there's a curve. Which is only so about six kilometres, six, know. seven kilometres. She's saying that it's flat. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have one. 
You know, they, and these the people are very confused about. Um, they really need to get together and sort out their thrash story. out, thrash out their their faults, thrash out their facts, faults. because or what what they allegedly know or claim yeah. to know. They should um, sync them all up so that yeah. everyone's singing from yeah. the same song sheet. Because this girl Casey is certainly not uh, singing from the same song sheet as other. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of one of their songs. Yeah. Songs Casey yeah, and the, the Sunshine Band. Oh, um, give it up, give it up, baby, oh, uh, give it up. Maybe she needs to give it up. Now, 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 now. Casey, give it up, give it up. Casey, give it up. Well, you know the earth isn't a globe. <laughs> do be do 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, but she should. She should just give it yeah, up. Yeah, she should just give it up and just realise that she's... Get on with her life. Yeah, and just realise she's been b lied to. Yeah, you know, basically. No harm in it. You know, it's quite yeah. easy to accept. You've just got to think to yourself, OK, I've been lied to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been lied to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's all you've got to do. Just, anyway, come on. Just say go. it over and over again. I've been lied to. Let's I've been lied on. to. People lie to me. Yeah. That's all you've got to yeah. say. Anyway, come on, let's go. Yeah. Go on. And you'll be fine. Yeah, let's go on. So we've got that one. What's next then, Peter? Uh well, let's, we need to go on to, um, we can go on to Angular Resolution, some information on Angular Resolution, and that will lead us on to some more rubbish, which is about, well, oh, just from, okay. also, yeah. we need to put Casey into the bin for that well, one. Yeah, we? she, well, she's already been in the bin, you know. Oh, she's uh, been she gone, was already you know. in the bin before we started the video. Yeah, she was already in the bin. Um, Angular, you know, Angular Resolution, a lot of people have heard of this, I'm sure. Angular resolution describes the ability of any image forming device, such as an optical or radio telescope, a microscope, a camera, or an eye, eye, eye to distinguish small details of an object, thereby making it a major determinant of image resolution. Oh, it is used go. in optics applied to light waves. Oh, okay. Uh, in antenna theory, it's only an idea, mm -hmm. applied to radio waves. Oh, because it's only an idea as to how radio waves propagate. Absolutely. It's only an idea. Because yeah, yeah. I can't see them. They can't see them and they can't, well, they can't do anything with them. Yeah. Um, it is used in uh, blah, 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 and in acoustics applied to sound waves. Uh, the, the colloquial use of the term resolution sometimes causes confusion. When an optical system is said to have a higher high resolution or high angular resolution, it means that the perceived distance or actual angular distance between the resolved neighboring objects is small. Blah, 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 blah. We don't yeah. need to go into it. But, um, um, uh, the value that quantifies this property, whatever it, that is, that sign is, a zero with a mark through it, which is given by the Rayleigh criterion. Now, we've come across the Rayleigh criterion with Dave McKeegan, haven't we? He mentioned the Rayleigh criterion. Oh, uh, you know, just to, He wants to show off to people that he's allegedly intelligent and he's clever. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But, basically. you know, he, I, in my opinion... You, you well, he's a bit like Casey. She likes to come across as though she's clever. Sure, but yeah. you, uh, you can be clever, you can be intelligent, you can be oh. good at what you do, but you can still be stupid. But you can actually do a demonstration that debunks your own understanding. But you won't even see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's and how you, stupid you, you are. You can't see it. You know, Cody Slab, he's a very good uh, example of someone who's really yeah, stupid. Because he can't light a rocket motor in a vacuum. He can't ignite uh, gunpowder. How does NASA send up rockets to space? Oh, right, well, if I can't, uh, 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 I don't, if I can't get this rocket motor working in my vacuum, how uh, can NASA, NASA, get, NASA them get, them get them to work? Oh, I don't know. I'll encapsulate it in, in air. <laughs> It's right. funny, isn't it? Anyway, 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 come anyway on. Of course, there's yeah. some images there. So, but we've got some. Yeah, the Rayleigh cartoon it goes into so much bullshit. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But we've got some images here just to give people an idea of what they mean by angular resolution. So, you've got um, at uh, at the top there. You've got the picture of the moon. This is what people would see from ground level. So, looking up in the night sky, you'll see the moon. Yeah, but there. I'm but I'm just trying to figure out what do they mean mean by angular. Oh, really? Yeah, what do they mean by angular resolution? And why can't it just be resolution? resolution. Yeah, basically. Really, the ability to resolve your well, the really, detail in or, images. Or really, your viewing resolution. resolution. Not uh, angular. Oh, I don't know. Your viewing resolution. Yeah, sure. But anyway, um, so they look at them, and if they go in, if they zoom in, increase the magnification, this is what you'll see. You'll see something like mm. this. Now, if you get that red square there, and you zoom in, zoom in on that area, you'll see this, allegedly. Allegedly. Okay? Mm. And if you zoom in on this uh, red area, you'll see this well, image, allegedly. 
because we're going in so far. I mean, how do we know these are real? Well, you don't, do you? We don't. Uh, because if you zoom, zoom in, in on that red square, zoom, you'll get this image, image here. Wow. Wow, look at this. And if you zoom in on this area here, you'll see this image. And if you zoom in on this area, you'll see this. <laughs> you'll see a picture of a, a, an a astro dummy. A dummy. Uh, or an actor yeah. um, on on a pretend moon landing set um, with the lunar a lunar but lunar buggy yeah a lunar buggy and they've what they've done there in the hand is they've um, superimposed the, a picture the with, angular resolution the angular of a black hole of a black hole that's meant to be the size that is seen as the size of a tennis ball absolutely of course yeah. so can you can you understand angular resolution <laughs> i don't know where they get this cop this picture from of the this astronaut well yeah i know yeah of this that's actor allegedly on this moon set that's because what, what's got, that been put in there for it's how can you get that from this image here well you can't and the thing is is that our biggest gripe about all of this rubbish is that you <sighs> The, the, your optical instrument will, o will only depend on the amount of light that's coming in into it through the lens. Okay, now you can only have so much light coming into your lens. Yeah. So you, you make because unless of course you move closer to the thing, you're, the object that you're wanting to photograph. You're observing. You're observing. If you go closer, you can allow more light in from that um, yeah. object. But a lot of the time, they can't move closer. So how on earth can they? Um, zoom in and magnify so that they can resolve the image and see so much detail mm. how is it possible it's impossible when they when they cannot control the amount of light that enters the telescope okay. or that's being generated by the object oh right yeah that's the thing yeah because it's like this black hole only so much light can come into the telescope Absolutely, and the black hole only generates so much light, light. itself. Oh, yeah, so if black holes are real, of so course. They'll only be able to resolve it to a, to a certain point. So they can't go any more than that. that yeah, absolutely, of course. Because yeah. it's out of their limitations. It's beyond their limitations. limitations. Yeah, but you, what you'll find is that in time they'll come up with all this rubbish yeah. and they've developed more, more powerful telescopes oh. to be able to even find certain bits of rock or debris that are floating around in the black no, hole. No, 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 no. Or well, perhaps. No, no, no. What they'll do is that they'll they'll tell people that they're creating better telescopes, but what they're actually doing is manufacturing software that can resolve the images like they do with... Oh, of course, uh, yeah. Like, like when you zoom, take images well, of Jupiter or something like that. Alleged, the alleged the planets. software refines those images and creates... Yeah, that's that's basically the yeah. planet. Yeah, and that's what they want, and what that what they want to create is what they want. Yeah, basically, it's how they see yeah. it to be. So they can create software that can that can resolve that image of the black hole even finer. Yeah, and because they can create what they think they want a black hole to, to be. be. Yeah. So in other words, that they're essentially creating. Their Your reality. Shit. Yeah, basically. Your reality. They're creating it. And yet, you know, I don't know how anyone cannot see this, you know. Mm. How anyone can't see this is just... But anyway, me. so we anyway. go from angular resolution to a Nathan Oakley video. Right, OK. So we everyone should know what angular resolution mm -hmm. is. OK. So we move on to a Nathan Oakley video where why do things disappear from the bottom up on, on a, a flat, flat earth. earth and if we go back on our ships behind that one is so he's explaining this observation this, this observation why is it we can't see the bottom of the boat boats there you go okay so it's quite this is what nathan oakley is explaining in his video. video now it's only three minutes long he did it so he uploaded it uh four years ago so whether he's still adheres to this kind of idea i don't know or but changed it if if he if he has if he has changed his ideas we should take the video should withdraw the video but uh, let's why do a, things oh, let's have a little listen to this okay why do things disappear from the bottom up as they get further into the distance well i would say it's because of an angular size limitation so we're going to take a brick 
this breeze block out of the corner of this house that we can see. And we're nice and close and obviously we can see the bottom of it. But we're going to start backing away, notwithstanding that everybody understands that a brick that's in the near foreground looks bigger than a brick that's in the distance. So we take our brick out from our house and we're going to start backing away from it when we put it in something to give it a bit of scale and context. So we've got these hay bales and we're going to put it next to this one in the near foreground and then back away from it and obviously we can still see the brick. Then we're going to move on to these three that are in the mid ground that have got a bit of the uh, old refractive effects going on. So we'll back away from this one and you can still just about see it. it's more than one pixel resolution of the camera that's taken this image so we can still see it even when we back away teeny tiny though it may be. And then we're going to move on to the very very far background and place it in the band of if you like horizon and it's going to be in a section that's less than a pixel. So as we back away from it, we'll see it, but when we get to the full frame of the shot, you'll see that it's less than a pixel resolution of the camera. So this unfortunate little breeze block will be too small to see. The camera just doesn't have the resolution to resolve it. So as we back away from it in this instance, we see that the brick or breeze block is just simply too small to see. Now imagine for a moment that we go back to that breeze block in its little position, less than one pixel on the horizon, and we take the original house that we removed it from and put it on top of that brick. So we've got the breeze block, it's still less than one pixel, and we've got the rest of the house. And then we start backing away from that. As you can see, the brick will still disappear exactly as it did, we haven't changed it, but the house, which is a larger angular size than the brick at the bottom of the house, will still be visible. And as we back out, the bottom section of the house, which is about the size of the brick right next to it, will still have gone. Now, if we move on to a different example, just so you can visualise it in a slightly different way, we've got a couple of cars, maybe one at a quarter of a mile, maybe one at a mile and a half. And again, we'll put a breeze block next to them, just to give you a bit of an idea of scale. And then what we'll do is we'll move the breeze block exactly the same way to the horizon, where we have less than one pixel of resolution from this camera. So we put it in the blurry mess, and obviously the same will happen. We back away from it, and it disappears. But in this instance, after we've backed away from it and it's disappeared because its angular size is too small, we'll build a building with 500 of them, maybe a 500 foot building on top of that first breeze block. And what do you know, we can still see it, but the breeze block that disappeared because of angular size has still gone. This is the reason that things disappear from bottom up. It's a simple question of angular size versus the angle of attack or the angle of view. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Right. I can't, uh, right. I've, right. I've, got, I've really got, um, I'm kind of speechless after watching that because, you know, he, he doesn't really address why things disappear from the bottom up on, on at the horizon. Yeah, let's go back on the ship. Let's go back on the ship. Yeah, let's go back on the ship. And here we go, here's the ship. Yeah. And so imagine there's the, there's the ship, okay? Now here's the ship, and it's yeah. it's moving away from the observer. There's the uh, visible horizon. Yeah. Okay, visible horizon there. And as the sh ship goes out further and further, the bottom of the boat's being cut off. And how has this observation, okay, got to do? What's that got to do? with Nathan Oakley and his video, why... So we take our brick. ...why you can't see uh, the bottoms of ships. When why he talks about just different. angular resolution. When he's, all he's talking about is the ability to resolve objects that are far, 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 far away. Far away. Right, yeah. And he hasn't really addressed why um, the bottom of anything is, is uh, obscured yeah. by something that's in front of it. Yeah, you know, I, mm. you know, I can't. Uh, mm. I, you know, I can't. I can't. Mm. Th this baffles me. You yeah. know, the worst thing is, is that somebody sent me a link to this video and says, "Yeah, Nathan, he's he's nailed it. This is this is." What, and I'm thinking, what? No, I just can't work this one out. You know, he puts the breeze block right on the, right on the kind of. No, he puts it down to the to the, the idea that the breeze block is less than a pixel. Big, yeah. 
which is why you can't see so he's it. He's not answering but why. He's not it's, saying it's there's there's the visible horizon in front of. The, he's not explaining why things disappear from the bottom up. up because just because you can't resolve an object that's in the distance doesn't mean to say that it's disappeared from the bottom up. Absolutely, yeah, of course, absolutely, of course. Because it, if you if you're going on his understanding about that you can't resolve objects. Then really, you should still see that you should still see the bow, but you should still kind of make out the bottom of the bow. You should still see the the, the bottom of the bow, even uh, if you use a telescope. In other words, or an optical instrument. In other words, what he should have done, in my opinion, is that he should have actually have addressed his video. Why do things disappear from the bottom up on a flat earth? He should have used an actual ship. Yeah. going out to sea and use that as an as example a example and based his understanding on that and not on this kind of and stuff. not on a concrete block that belongs to a house absolutely yeah that he's he's or putting building. he's putting an on a landscape yeah you know you can see the house there in the distance and it gets blurred and smaller and smaller obviously but what's that got to do with an object of a, like a boat on the horizon, what, yeah. what, what's it got to do? With? Yeah. You know, you can even see the bottom in this, even in this um, um, example. You can even see the bottom of the building that he's built with his breeze blocks. Yeah, I know. You can see you the know, bottom of it. You can see the bottom of it. So, what? How can you connect the two? You can't. You can't connect them. That's why we think it's tough. This is one for the bin. Yeah, it's one for that. You can see there the bottom of the yeah. building that he's built with his breeze blocks. Yeah. And yet that should be behind the horizon. horizon. Yeah, because if we look at the ship, look at the image of the ship. There we go. That's that ship's behind. Sorry, there we go. The, the ship is behind the visible horizon. It's behind the visible horizon. horizon. Behind, you know what behind means? Yeah. Let's go, there's my hand, and this hand is, from your view, this hand is behind this yeah. hand, yeah? You get it? Behind. Yeah. So the visible horizon, if you're five foot seven, roughly approximately tall, and you're standing on the shoreline, yeah. and you look out, you can see three miles to the visible horizon, approximately three miles. Sure, so if an object's beyond that th three mile mark, four miles, point, four, five miles even, you know, you won't see the bottom of it on certain occasions simply because the visible horizon is obscuring the view. Yeah. Now, some people would say to us, well, that's because there's a hump of water. That's the hump but of water. But it can't be, because according to Casey and her Casey, rain, band, band. Her rain band, her rain band, oh, right, it's flat. It, it's flat. It's flat, you know. There's no curve. There's no curve. And water doesn't, do, water doesn't curve. Curve. Water I've never doesn't known curve. water to curve. Even over 400 kilometres. Absolutely. Water always finds its own level, Four. you know. I mean, it's good ideas, but at the end of the day, you, have, you need to prove yeah. them. At the end of the day, we think this is a phenomena. It's yeah. a phenomena. It's, it's just a phenomena. It's something, but it's so a natural phenomena that it's that nobody can explain, explain, fully explain. Absolutely, of course, yeah. But what is interesting about this video, I mean, Dave McKeegan, I'm sure, showed this video, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. He showed this particular video in his video. But one thing he didn't do was that he didn't play the video long enough to um, become more enlightened. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Because if we play this video even longer, you'll see the boat go further out to sea. Okay, so let's just watch this boat. Let's just, can we slow it down? Yeah, slow it down. Uh, we won't do... 0 0.25. 0.75. Right, right. Yeah, 0 0.75 should be, should be right. So let's just watch the boat move out uh, further. Okay. Or maybe I should have done... Uh, is that... Oh, yeah. I've sped it up. No, oh, it's, it's time-lapse. Footage. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, look, look, what's happening? Looks what's happening, no. Oh, look, can you see that object that's moving across the front of the boat? Oh, right, it looks so like it's even further away. Looks like it must be another a boat I'm, or I'm a hydrofoil. Slow this down. Let's a hydrofoil, maybe. Hydrofoil or whatever. Let's slow this down. Look, okay, let's slow this down. There, there. 
Uh, can you say that? that oh, right. Isn't that amazing? amazing yeah. Mm. Now, can you start seeing something else that's interesting with this yeah, image? I, yeah, I can. I can see. I can see a reflection. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Of course. Now, you, you know the the doors. Some you can see the doors. of. I think it's a ferry. I think this is a ferry, isn't it? Oh, well, it's a ship. Anyway. Well, yeah, it's a ship, but it's got, it looks like it's got two, yeah, it's, it's two dark a, panels. A ferry, yeah, it's probably on the a back. ferry, yeah. It's got two dark panels. Now, if you look at the dark panels as it, as the ship moves away, okay, let's take it. From Something there. strange happens. Absolutely, of course, yeah. You, you see that. There you go. There's the, the panels are there. You can see the panels. They're getting smaller. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then we see the objects, okay. Yeah. Well, let that pass. Then they disappear. Oh, right, yeah. The, the panels have actually disappeared. disappeared. Where have they gone? Where have they gone? You can't see them. Now, they've got to still be there, haven't they? They've still got to be there. And now, all of a sudden, you see a black line. Oh, what? right, Can yeah. you see that? Well, you see a blue line. Can you see... Oh, sorry, you see a dark line right there. Now, we could argue that what you're seeing there is a reflection... Mm of the windows, the dark windows that are on top there. Yeah, yeah. So basically, these windows here, okay, yeah, there, yeah. you're seeing a reflection of those. Okay, that's what you're actually seeing. This is what we think, this is what we think that is. Mm, it's a reflection. Yeah. Oh, now if it's a reflection, then mm. what, what kind of material reflects things? Um, well, a mirror. Oh right, yeah, but there's no, mirror. there's no mirror on on the in the in the water, is there? In the water, well, obviously it's mm. water. Water reflects. Oh, doesn't water it? reflects, doesn't it? Yes. Water mm. reflects. So could it be that what we're seeing here is is just a reflection? It sounds reasonable to me. And what's it? between the boat and the visible horizon here is water. Or what's beyond the visible horizon? Or what? Sorry, what's beyond the visible it's horizon water. is water. Is water. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. So let's let's oh, continue right, yeah. a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll see and what you, you mean. Yeah. Think, yeah, yeah. That, they do, that does look like a reflection Water. there yeah. of yeah. the mm. windows there. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I think. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah. Let, now mm. let's carry on. I don't think we need to because uh, the boat turns um, starboard. I think. Yeah. Here we go. Now you can see uh, this that's is a different, that's different. a different boat. So there's this one. And the windows now have actually merged. Oh, yeah, they have, haven't they? They've actually merged. The, with its the, reflection. The refl with its reflection. Yeah. You know, because it gets smaller, and you can see even more of a reflection, can't you? Oh, right, yeah, wow. Wow, you can see wow. a reflection there of this boat on the water's surface. Wow, isn't it amazing? So beyond the visible horizon here, there has to be water. Got to be water. Because mm. you're seeing a reflection. Now, some people might think this is a mirage, a superior mirage, oh, right. or um, whatever mirage, whatever it is. mirage it is. But as far as we can see, this is just a reflection, right. and a mirage, believe it, it is or not, a is a reflection. reflection. That's all a mirage is. is yeah. But all we're seeing here is just a reflection of the boat. You can see the dark area there on the bow, yeah, and that is reflected on the bottom there. Yeah. So really, what we're seeing is is that the water continues much further beyond the visible horizon mm -hmm. yeah and it goes straight out on to reach the true horizon the point the vanishing point, point yeah, the, the yeah. point at which you know yeah, the true horizon. vanishing point yeah now the boat just carries on um i think it goes yeah down. it goes behind and we've the, got some more this is this is the boat as it goes further um out and it goes across now you can see here in this area here this is a bit of land that the boat is going to sail or move behind. But you can see that even there is a reflection of the land on the water's, water's surface. surface. Mm, yeah. There's a reflection there, yeah. you know. I mean, it's it's um, it's there, Look, you know. Yeah. You don't have to be a brain box to yeah. uh, be able to understand what you're seeing here. Yeah. All you're seeing here is water so, mm. and reflections. Yeah. Of the objects are being reflected off of water. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Now we've got uh, another video to show people. Small, this small boat. boat. Yeah. Now, now this this is a great example of what. This is a clearer example of what we've just uh, similar to what we've yeah just, to what to what Quite, we've seen. Yeah, sure. And now it's here we can see that the 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 visible horizon could well be 
the dark blue sea, the, the dark blue part portion of the sea that's going straight there. Yeah, of course. Whereas yeah. the the boat. See, we just let's just play this. So he zooms in. Oh right, yeah. Well, f firstly, let's the the title of the video: a small boat looming over a mirage of sea surface. How can you have because a mirage of sea surface? surface? What he's saying is that that the dark blue sea there yeah he's saying that that is where the water is that's where the water is yeah that's sure. what he's thinking and the light blue area above that it's just a mirage it's just a mirage it's not real it's not real this is what the this guy who put the, uploaded the video is saying but we would disagree with that and we'd say what you're seeing is what you get yeah there we is water there. absolutely there's water there so let's just watch some of this when he, as he zooms in on these objects you know we can safely say that that boat that, or that vessel that's in that is actually in water. water. Yeah, but it's beyond the visible horizon. I would probably say that's the visible horizon there. Um, and, and we could be wrong. Could be wrong because we could actually we can see land right on the horizon. Yeah, we can see land right on there. So the the visible horizon could be this line there. Mm. And what makes this water darker than the water behind it is if you get like like a estuary water coming yeah, up. Yeah, it could into be two different types of waters. Yeah, absolutely, of course, that are meeting. Um, he f picks up a, a better. Uh, yeah, there you go. This is a, this is a better picture, better image. You can see the landmass there. Okay, you can see that has got to be, that has got to be the um, visible the horizon. Visible horizon, isn't it, really? Because yeah. you've got the landmass on the top. Yeah. But the, the boat there is certainly on um, level water. You can see all of the boat. You, you know, it's not at the bottom hasn't been obscured. Yeah. You know, and when you think about it, if it, if it was supposed to be um, obscuring um, by a curved water, because we've we've been having conversations with people, and they're saying what you see is curved water. Yeah. The water's like this. Yeah. Well, if that is the case, and you, you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to see the boat. That's fishing boat. Yeah, if that's the case, and this is curved water that's hiding the bottom of this boat. Wait there, let's just stop it where I can see the water. You know, I want us there, and there's water hiding the bottom of that boat. If that's truly the case, why is it we can see this boat? Hmm. We can see all of this boat. Boat, yeah, that, old, yeah. that little old fishing boat. That little old oh. boat there. We can see all of it. And if it was further out, it would just get smaller. Yeah. Due to perspective. Due to perspective, we, it wouldn't. We wouldn't. The bottom of it wouldn't be cut off. Yeah. So what we can say is that obviously, when people see this kind of stuff through the telescope, it will only occur on certain days. It's yeah. got to. It's got to have something to do with atmospherics. That's got a great part yeah. to play, and weather, uh, weather, and all this kind of stuff. But um, that would make this kind of um, observation, observation very. Unique, if I can call yeah. it, call it that. Unique to those conditions. Yeah, this, this is why we would call it a phenomena. Absolutely, and it, it doesn't happen all the time. time. If the Earth, if the water was curving like this, it would happen all, all, the, time, all of the time. time. Yeah. But, but it doesn't. Is, it doesn't happen all of the time. Look at this small boat. Yeah. You know. Look just, at Casey, four hundred kilometres. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, you know, you you got this little boat there. You know, I mean, get real people. You know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You've only got to have a look. Uh, to, um, go out and do some study. Study yeah. the anyway. But but one thing that is 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 easy. One thing that's uh, there. You go. You can see the boat. You can see the land mass. You can even yeah. see the land at the uh, at the back there. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. But know. one thing that is important to um, to determine, or one, well, one thing that you can easily determine uh, whether you know we have some our our idea has. Yeah, some. there you go. That's even a boat further out. <laughs> All right, yeah, you yeah, yeah. That would be, I mean? that, that's, you shouldn't be able to see that. Shouldn't be able to see. Well, you know, come on, get real people. And know? I think this is what a lot of flowers say that you can zoom in on a boat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, out, absolutely. Because that should be hidden by a curve. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, you can't have a curve and not have a curve. It can't be flat, and it can't be curved. Yeah, absolutely, it doesn't work. So as far as we can say, if you can see the boat here in this video, okay, and when we show you the other video about the sunrise or the sunset, yeah, go on, sunrise, yeah, yeah go on. when we show you that, when we, when you look at those, yeah, it doesn't matter. When you look at this video, this video of this boat, you have to come to the conclusion that there is um, 
it's a phenomenon and there's no curving water yeah, you basically. have to yeah there's, there's no other way yeah, that you can get the, around it let's go on the sunrise so let's go on flat earth photography now we watched this video a long long time ago but this is a very good video now obviously when you're looking out from the shoreline on the horizon okay the the an object that would be the most furthest away that you can see clearly would be a celestial object like the sun or the moon sunrise sunrise sunset, sunset or even moonrise moonset you know um on the horizon you know because these objects are way 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 into the distance so that would give us a better understanding on the shape of the water the yeah. water surface wouldn't it well we would deter help determine whether the water's curving or not absolutely of course now when we look at this um so we're looking at um he pans in on the moon so yeah, we don't need to watch that yeah i'll just give it give it um some um contact context so everyone knows so he's looked at the moon which is up there and he's going to turn pan his camera around and watch the sunrise sunrise okay um over a, a stretch of water okay now we're just going to zip this through okay so you can clearly tell there's the sun now the first thing that's important to see or to recognize straight on from watching this video is that the shape of the sun well there's a couple of things isn't there well one that is there we have we see again the visible horizon which is this, this line this, of water this line of water that's can, your visible horizon we can clearly see that so if we go back onto that ship compare so it with the ship we've got ships there's, yeah. there's your ship we, we, there's the there's visible, visible horizon. horizon there's the water line okay yeah. there's the really see clearly that see that it's exactly the same that's exactly the same i've got to find it right there this one here um but what we can also see is that we can see the top of the sun yeah well, well the sun rising the sun rising but it's look it appears to be casting a shadow, shadow. there's so ref reflection not, not shadow, casting yeah, a shadow it's cast it's a reflection. there's a reflection it's being cast okay it's a reflection is being cast now again okay we're, we're seeing we're seeing the same as what we uh, saw with, with the, the boat with the ship as it went further out to sea yeah. So uh, whether whether that's true or not, I don't know. Less than three thousand miles could be. Who knows? But you can see a reflection. Look at the shape of the sun. Mm. You know, we can clearly see there's a reflection. And okay. what's it reflecting off? Absolutely, of, of course. Yeah. It, well, it can't be a mirror. You know, because there's no mirrors out in sea. Yeah. But there's water. So obviously, the sun is being reflected f off the water. Yeah. The sun is being reflected off the water, and also one thing people have to remember, and that is, when you're uh, on the on the shore, you're looking at the sea from a, a very acute angle. Yeah, where it's be beyond the visible horizon, it's just going to be smooth. Oh, so yeah, you'll see it's it going to be so smooth it will be it will be able to reflect. Yeah, sure, the sky above, or whatever is above it. Absolutely. Now, as we as the um, as the uh, Oh, you might as well move it Yeah, forward. I'm going to move it forward now. But as the, uh, the sun moves further and further nearer, because that's ex essentially what's happening. Yeah. Um, there you go, look. You, that looks more like a, an arch of a bridge, doesn't it? You yeah. Know? It doesn't look like a round sun, does it? Yeah, but you you know, you've got to remember that it's casting a, a reflection. reflection. That's what's distorting the shape. Yeah. The reflection. And so you've got that. Uh, wait there, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, put that in right. There you go, and the reflection becomes more and more clear mm -hmm. when you start seeing the sun full, fully rising. Rise, you know, so you can see it's um, the the bottom. You can see the full circular shape of the sun starting to emerge. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Look, and you've you've got it there. Now, as far as we're concerned, we've taken a just we, pause. That. We took a, a little snapshot of the. Uh, I just want to get it on yeah there. yeah right That's there fine. we took a snapshot of this video and we put it in gimp just to highlight just to highlight or show to people oh um, just put it back on that put it back on what yeah tether oh yeah that's yeah fine. that's fine yeah what we did was that we put it on uh yeah there. we put it on put it in gimp and basically what what we're seeing what we see from the image is that this is exactly 
are still this is is still taken from the image but you can see the reflection of the sun on the water surface below the sun mm. so below we've put a white line across to indicate the position of roughly where we think the true horizon is mm. not the visible horizon and the true horizon everything below the true horizon is water mm. everything is water so, yeah the sun is rising over a body of water. water we saw that at the start of the video mm. okay and that's why there's a reflection there because it's water yeah okay it, it's literally water so you know if you if anyone out there thinks we're wrong i mean i'd I'd really like to you know yeah you know i think you're mad i, I don't think you can I well, don't there, think there, there has to be water there to be reflecting the sun's light absolutely of course yeah you know i mean you come up with anything you could say it was oh, it's a double mirage or it's a superior it's mirage super, an inferior mirage whatever mirage but at yeah. the end of the day you can't you can't disagree that what we're seeing on the small boat here is water it's water there's water yeah. there yeah you can see the water going right into the distance to the other side or until where the land yeah. masses yeah, are yeah. you can actually see that there's water there um you know so you know th there's there's water in the oceans and obviously there's water below the sun mm. yeah. in water. this image in this image and that's why there's a reflection there yeah 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 basically it's quite straight but it's quite straightforward even i think yeah, yeah it, it's, it's quite very straightforward it? you don't need to you don't need to have a but PhD. this is our understanding of why we consider it to be a level plane absolutely of course yeah because this demonstrates that the earth is the the water doesn't curve like this at all yeah. no of course it doesn't well, because we wouldn't see this well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't see this if you had a curved surface no, you, you just wouldn't see it at all it's just yeah. ridiculous you yeah. know there you uh, go. but there you go so so that's it yeah but let's know what you think you know i mean uh, we're always yeah. willing to uh read read your comments and uh yeah and um, engage in a little bit of banter yeah and we've also got plenty of bins there to put your rubbish in as well absolutely of course <laughs> absolutely yeah. of course so that that wraps us up really you know so we've we've gotten through quite a lot of rubbish really today yeah so what's for the bin this week well we've seen nathan oakley's uh angular resolution explanation oh, to account for why things why the bottom of objects cannot be seen, seen on the horizon for yeah, example yeah. um, um kc and, 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 and a sunshine band and a rain band she's been thrown in the bin and yeah. we've had um what else we've had um stephen styles stephen styles oh, i don't need this i don't well. need this yeah, he's and been george as well yeah we have all these people who, who think that you know really fantastical things to be true that yeah never been proved to be true so oh like ultraviolet light is you could there's ultra you can see ultraviolet light oh sorry ultraviolet is there but you can't see it i'm sorry oh right it's yeah just not there. oh right yeah there is a, there is a spectrum there but you see it as white light yeah because the spectrum makes up white light <laughs> yeah right yeah right yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah we, we get it yeah. there's a lot of mad people about at the yeah. end of the day not my fault you know it's just the way life is unfortunately and you know well, you've made people are the way people are and you, you've really got to you know sift the shit sift out the shit so that it doesn't affect you in your life and you can get on with your own life and just get the most out of your life as much as you can uh, and get these people avoid these people who are just hindrances time wasters time wasters and yeah. hindrances because yeah. that's all they are really but anyway, so thanks ever so much for watching. Come to the end. And always remember till next time, if something doesn't make sense, like thinking that you're on a, a ball Earth, planet Earth that's actually rotating. Oh, well, yeah, thinking that the, the horizon is flat and it's about 400 kilometres wide and yet ships go over the curved water. Sure, absolutely, of course. And uh, mm -hmm. even thinking that... Um, oh, sorry, ships that are like four miles out four miles away four or five, five miles, miles out oh going over a curve going over a curve yeah or, or thinking that oxygen is a constituent of yeah 
thinking that there was actually plasma, plasmoid, a plasmoid generator. Oh, right, yeah. You know, yeah. You or know. even you've got a thunder, thunderstorm generator, but you've got two, en two enclosed air systems. Two enclosed, yeah, two separate so air, 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 air systems, systems you yeah. know. Yeah, it's just absolutely it's just ridiculous crazy and you got all these people who think that um, they think totally mad things it's just unbelievable yeah, of course it's all bollocks isn't it yeah. so thanks ever so much and we'll see you see next time, time. Okay. bye tell her the earth isn't round it's flat how do you know I've observed it in all my travels over Europe it's flat everywhere it's flat